How would it feel to have a thriving fitness business and have the freedom to enjoy life at the fullest? Well, that is exactly what the Trainer Revenue Multiplier Show is going to give you. My name is Matthew Park. This is Amy Filer. Hey, guys. And we are here to serve. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Trainer Revenue Multiplier Show. As always, my name is Jamie Filer. I'm the co-host of the TRM Show, and I'm excited to be here with you today with Mr. Isaac Miller, formerly of Miller Strong Training, currently of Prolific PT. What are the other uh, branches of your current business, Isaac Miller? Uh, so it's it's prolific. First of all, thank you for having me on. Uh, my name is Isaac Miller, or as I like to refer to myself, the mini Matthew. And um, <laughs> and honestly, no, it's uh, I killed I killed Miller Strong Training, which we'll get into later, I'm sure. Uh, but I birthed Prolific PT and Prolific Fitness Training Facility or Prolific FTF. Which and, is a um, order, correct? Yes, and it is in the works. Um, so we're not open yet, but we're working with uh, the bank getting approval and getting with Arsenal Strength and, and getting all the equipment picked out. So it's it's rocking and rolling. Fantastic. Oh, I'm so <laughs> that is such a Matthew Park thing to say. Rocking and rolling. How many voice messages have we received from Matthew Park? Getting things rocking and rolling. Okay, Mini Matt, let's yeah. go. Let's... <laughs> today's today's topic is an interesting one. We're talking about sales, marketing, and branding. And the reason this is so important isn't just because sales and marketing are going to be your bread and butter for making money, but I believe that people often use those two terms interchangeably. And they are absolutely not. Sales is not the same as mar selling is not marketing. Um, Isaac, before we even dive into the definition, give us as you do, give us some wisdom about sales, marketing, and branding. Well, I mean, you nailed it on the head where we all tend to think it's one thing when it's not, uh, but they do all go together and they all yeah. need each other. Yeah. Um, so it's finding that system between sales, marketing, and branding that's right for you uh, so that you're not trying to kill a three-headed dragon essentially because that's what we tend to try and do but instead yeah. you know you can take on three separate lizards mm -hmm. uh quit making a three-headed dragon out of out of a one-headed lizard so that's that's kind of my wisdom going into that that is a brilliant way of putting it so we believe in trm sales is the base of your pyramid marketing is is the middle it is the meat and potato but then and then branding is kind of the apex it's the top would you agree that that is the order sales first then marketing, then branding. Yes. And for the listeners, uh, realize that sales is not just making a sale. It is everything from creating your presentation to knowing and having clarity of who you're serving and who you're selling to, as well as your process of an actual consultation. And so it's not just the sale itself. So when we say sales, it's literally creating the entire baseline around who you are as a company and who you're trying to target. And then the marketing and branding is on top of that. 100%, 100%. So let us explicitly define it in a Matthew Park term. Sales is obviously the offers that you sell, how you conduct a sales conversation, your sales process, Isaac, as you said, how you sell yourself, which is also your confidence, okay? How you follow up, understanding your worth, your copywriting, how you overcome objections, how you convert a lead, and your ability to persuade authentically. Did I miss anything? No, I mean, you nailed it. Only thing I would add is that uh, currency doesn't have to be money. Um, so whenever you are selling yourself, like we think it's selling for money, um, but realize even non -for nonprofit companies have to sell. Like it's not just for a profit. So your time, your energy, everything like that is currency too. So your sales process isn't just the money exchange. It's the energy exchange. It's the time exchange. Could not agree more. If we think in terms of dating, what are we doing? We're pitching to the person across the table the idea of spending their time, their future with us and vice versa, right? Often, sometimes we'll swipe left or right just based on looks alone because that we value our time and we know our worth. And perhaps just aesthetically speaking, superficially, that person is not worth that currency, right? Yep. 
So we address, I want to talk about sales process because literally right before you and I hopped on the live, we were talking about you hiring a VA um, and, you know, your switch from Miller Strong training to prolific PT, which means that you need a, a sales process because you took your name out of the business, which means eventually you want to get to the point where your business makes you money without you being as involved. So tell us about that. Yes, this is something that um, really came down to clarity. And I think clarity is probably the most important and the least uh, developed as a young entrepreneur. And this is something that, you know, Matt called me out on and, and I had to go back to the drawing board and really realize, like, what is it that I want? What is it that I'm, I'm striving to do? So when it came to prolific PT and realizing, like, my whole dream was getting a PhD, Mm -hmm. and, and getting a PhD within something very specific like um, mechanics, like human body mechanics. And, and so now that I'm on this journey and I, I sort of realized, okay, why do I want the PhD? Why do I want it? Well, really it came down to bragging rights. It really didn't have anything to do with the knowledge. It's like, okay, well, do I need to uh, be able to have a PhD to make the impact that I, I want? Or do I need to be able to manage PhDs to make the impact that we want? And it came down to, I need to be able to manage PhDs uh, to get uh, the impact that I want for this industry, not so much me. Uh, and so that changed the way that I viewed my business and the way I viewed my branding. Um, Cause now I'm going for trainers who are ready to make an impact and not just me myself as the trainer trying to make an impact. So I think that is so important to note, right? We talked about the pyramid of sales, marketing, branding, but you're talking about like a pre-pyramid foundation of knowing why it is you want to sell and essentially the clarity behind the goal of, of what it is you're selling and your core offer. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So um, if you can't sell or have no sales process, you're dead in the water. You cannot just make it up as you go along because- the people on the other side of the phone are going to hear the lack of confidence and the lack of clarity in your voice. But also when it comes time for you to start hiring other people and they're like, yes, I'm so ready. Let's do it. I believe in your vision, Isaac. Where's the script? And you're like, oh, yeah, about that. Right. Mm -hmm. that, right. It's, it's very hard to pass that off eventually. And the longer you're in the industry, the more you see that. Uh, and I think this was something that I had to get over that fear um, because in this industry, you know, we have a tendency to look at the followers. We look at the engagement. We look at, you know, oh, this person is, is like a celebrity status. They have that blue check mark. So they must be doing really well. Uh -huh. And if you look into it, you realize that, you know, you think they're living this rich, lavish lifestyle because they're this top selling coach. But really, that money comes from whatever sponsorship they have. And they're really not selling many programs. Um, so when it comes to their actual sales process, they're failing and they're living off the money from their sponsorships. But once that sponsor sponsorship is done, they're done um, because they think that their ebooks can get them to success uh, because of their click on my bio and a hundred thousand followers. But honestly, that's not true. And I mean, you can attest to that too. You have the following and you know, it's still a lot of work on the back end with the pipelines and sales to actually make a good revenue from training. And it's possible, but looking at the, uh, at the influencers who have all that stuff and you think, oh man, their marketing's easy. They just post it online and everyone buys it. It's not true. Yeah. Um, they might buy an ebook, but an ebook only goes so far. Those people don't actually have clients. They have uh, consumers and, and there's a difference. Yep. They have, they have fans. They don't yep. have clients. They have fans, right? So I'm so glad you brought up the word marketing because that leads us into the middle of the pyramid. Before we define what marketing is, let us define what it is not. Advertise, uh, marketing is not advertising. Isaac, what does that mean? So this is something that I also used to get wrong. I used to think that uh, making a specific ad uh, to promote was marketing uh, because that's what mad men and old school magazines tell you it is uh, and it's not uh i learned real quick that marketing is an entire nurturing system that you need to do in order to lead you to a sale um and so marketing is very individual to a person and you might be able to do the big the big net cast out the big net 
but it's not as easy as just reeling the net in. Once you have the fish in the net, now you need to specifically spearhead each fish. And, and that nurturing process might be a little different depending on who your client tell and who your goal client is. Yes, 100%. And what it comes down to is marketing is understanding your perfect client, the pain they're in, the goals, hopes, desires, and pleasures that they want. Um, but also, I would say marketing is in telling your own story, right? Absolutely. Because what you want mm -hmm. is for your audience to say, yeah, no, 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 I... I hear, I hear myself in that story, right? Like, you know, Jeff talks about the hero's journey and how we all have our version of that. And we have to tell our story in order for us not to become just another influencer out there selling an ebook, but a human being that people are going to want to get to know, like, and trust. Yep. Authenticity is huge. And we live in a, in a day and age where you can get information from anywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, you don't need a personal trainer, uh, you might need someone to talk to you throughout, you know, the week to make sure that you're staying on train on, on plan, but you don't need a personal trainer. Everything that you need is there. Mm -hmm. What they want is the person that's coaching them. Uh, it, it keeps them from having to go out of their way to learn everything. But again, the authenticity is what actually attracts the client. And so if you're authentic and genuinely yourself and, and, come from a level of vulnerability to show that you've been through some level of pain and brought yourself to pleasure, uh, it then will bring out the pain points of the client. And if you are training someone who's in line with your, you know, ideal avatar, as we call, or your ideal client, uh, then most of those pain points are going to be similar amongst the entire depth of clientele you have, as well as yourself. Uh, so then properly. Yeah. your yeah. marketing becomes very streamlined and it, it helps. Once you identify that ideal client and you can make yourself vulnerable within that population, suddenly it gets a lot easier to spear those fish. And, and now everyone's kind of in line. So whenever you do that pipeline, that, that funnel of, of marketing, after the initial kind of flashy sales pitch per se on online, on an email chain, whatever it is, once you grab their attention and they actually look at who you are as a coach or a trainer and see, wow, this person kind of falls in line with exactly what I've been through. Mm -hmm. Now it's way easier to make that sale. Yep. I could not agree more. The other thing we can say is that <gasps> without, that's so funny. My dog is like, my, my dog it. just went nuts. Right? Oh. That's what we do. Um, without marketing, you have no advertising, right? Like you said yourself, these influencers who have a blue check mark and a million followers sell an ebook to everybody. What good does that do, right? So they're all about the advertising. They're all about the flash, as you just said, but there's no marketing and no message, right? Oh, you want to lose fat, build muscle? Literally everybody in the world, literally, right? Yeah. And it's, it's one thing to say, you want to lose fat and build muscle. It's another thing to say, Hey, I know you've tried losing fat a ton of times and have had problems. I've been there too. Um, and I know, you know, for me, it was my thyroid condition and I had wow. to figure out how to fix my thyroid. Mm -hmm. So if you're having problems figuring out how to lose weight and gain muscle, and you think maybe it's something a little bit deeper than just dieting. Yeah. Let, let me know. I would love to help you out because I've been there. Boom. And it, everyone's it like, is. wait a second, that's me. Like yeah. they get so mad going out, out to the gym and seeing, you know, old Shelly or Mr. Joe getting ready for a show. And they're like, oh, it's so easy for them. They're shredded. Why isn't right. it easy for me? And, and it's a lot deeper. And, and it's not just dieting and, and exercise that makes you shredded. And yeah. so a lot of people don't realize that. So whenever you start to bring your story, your pain points, like when I start talking about my thyroid conditions and my, my narcolepsy and my autoimmune diseases that I, that I battle every day, suddenly people are like, wait, I've been there. I, I I'm going through that. And yeah, I, yeah. I need help. I need help getting through it. And uh, if I can show that I've kind of walked in that desert before and came out the other side um, and I can help them kind of stay in the shadows and keep their feet, you know, healed to yeah. get through that desert something that they, they want that guide and they will, they will pay for that guide. So guys, that is super important to note. I think a lot of times we shy away from telling our unique hero story because we think the vulnerability will make people think we're Clark Kent instead of Superman. But like the beauty of Clark Kent is that he is also Superman. 
So without letting people know that you have narcolepsy and an autoimmune disorder and a thyroid disease, people are just going to think you're shredded. And what differentiates you from the shredded guy selling an ebook for $7.99? Like, again, it comes down to why should people buy from you, not just your product or service? Yep, exactly. And this is where uh, my change in, in, in marketing and then on, honestly, my change in branding had to happen is, is because I was looking at, okay, my, my pain and pleasure and, and my expertise were kind of within the integrative health, functional health space. Uh, but is that what I actually wanted to do? Is that what I'm being called to do? Yeah. And uh, it, it took a lot for me to step away from that because that is what was paying my bills and what's, what's making me money and, and where I was impacting people. And, and I was actually helping people there, but I wasn't fully enjoying it. I was feeling I wasn't fulfilling my own story and that I still, you know, I'm trying to portray the, the hero by showing my vulnerability, but at the yeah. same time, I still didn't quite feel like I was the hero. Um, and I wasn't quite in the right story. I, I was trying to put myself in the story that wasn't quite for me. And so that's whenever I realized that I, with my military experience, my military history, I love being a part of a team. And whenever it was Miller Strong Training, there was no team. It was, it was me and, and then my clients. And as much as I love working with clients and them being a team, um, it wasn't exactly what I wanted to do because it's just me telling you know, people how to diet and, and, and exercise. So then looking back, because I loved, loved working with trainers when I managed self-made training facility uh, in uh, California. I love managing trainers. So I realized that's kind of where my calling is. And so with that, I had to change my branding and, and change everything. And going from being homeless uh, before getting into the Marine Corps to then being out of the Marine Corps and restarting my life with kind of nothing uh, and couch surfing, essentially, uh, to now earning consistently over 10 to 15 K a month is something that that is huge. But it came with, OK, I still have a story here to tell um, how many other trainers have to work three or four jobs just to be able to get their kids a birthday present, you yeah. know, and it's something that we've all been through as trainers. And that's where I was like, that is that is who I want to work with. A, a trainer, a good personal trainer who is heart driven and can make an impact deserves to take their family on vacation once a year and and not kill themselves to just pay the bills. And it's not right. And so that's where it was like, OK, I, I fully fall in line with TRM. And and that's where I envision prolific is impacting trainers. Uh, to give them the ability to change this industry through impact driven coaching and nutrition coaching while being able to live a very fulfilling and comfortable life uh, with true wealth, not just money, but true wealth. Yeah. Huge difference. So you taking us through the timeline of your own business really helps solidify the importance of sales, then marketing, then branding, which is the last point you brought up the branding part guys. Branding is, is the cherry on top. Branding isn't the ice cream sundae. Branding is the nice siding on your house. It is not the foundation or the roof or the walls. Branding is an accessory that you earn over time. Branding is what happens when you are get to, getting to the point where you're consistently making 10 to 15K a month and you want to start going on vacation. So you create a brand, not a human, a brand that you can then step away from. So... How do you create a brand, Isaac? So this is something where, yes, it is the cherry on top, but at the same time, it is the thing that will, once you've established everything in your business and your business model, the branding mm -hmm. is what will take you to the next level. The branding is the, the break of the clouds with the skyscraper, right? It's the top of the mountain where you're looking down and all you see is clouds and, yeah. and it's just serenity, you know, like that's branding to me is the perfect example of why I left um, Miller Strong Training and went to Prolific is sure. because I realized, you know, three, four, five, 10 years from now, what's Miller Strong Training going to be? The exact same thing it is now. It's yeah. going to be coaching holistic functional health and contest prep. And that's it. Okay, well, great. How can I brand that? Well, yeah, I can get athletes to get me other athletes, but that's not really impact. It's just impacting one lane of people. So yeah. I was like, okay, well, what if I make it a different name, a different brand, Prolific PT? Okay, now what if I get coaches 
within their own in individual wheelhouse are prolific. So mm -hmm. if we have someone who's a lifestyle coach, uh, for me, it's, it, her name's Tatum. She's our lifestyle, one of our lifestyle coaches. She is fully dedicated to lifestyle coaching. Stan is the strength and conditioning powerlifting coach. And he's mm -hmm. just dedicated to that. Right now, I am the functional and holistic health and uh, contest prep coach, but I am just dedicated to that. Eventually, I'll get someone and I'll go out. But again, whenever I got these coaches, I gave them this wheelhouse. This is yours. Whenever a client comes to me or Stan and they want lifestyle coaching, they go to you. And I gr gave a, a system in place to kind of um, give incentive for that. Uh, to allow our coaches to all work together in, in a way. And, and that goes into the back business, which we can talk about another podcast. But um, with the branding, whenever I got the trainer fully in line with good incentives, Prolific PT became their brand, not mine. Yeah. So Prolific Lifestyle is Tatum's brand. Prolific Strength is Stan's brand. Prolific Muscle is my brand. And so whenever we fully, fully decided and, and realized that prolific PT is whatever we want to make of it and that we can make money and impact lives through prolific PT, suddenly that brand grew because now all these trainers under it are living out this brand and building it. And then their clients are building out the brand. And so now suddenly it goes from just being this cherry on top to being the sprinkles, the hot fudge, the caramel, the bananas. You got a whole banana split. Uh, because now the branding isn't just about the cherry. It's not just about your ice cream scoop. It's about everyone's ice cream scoop and all of the toppings. And everyone wants a part of that. So, so what's really, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. So what is important about that though, guys, is that you see that he established different facets and different wheelhouses. What your brand needs is some sort of slogan, some sort of message, some sort of core value, right? Like at TRM, we have, we have essentially two different ones. We have I am limitless, which is printed on like all of our branding everywhere. But for our leaders, for myself, for Matt, for the people who are part of the core group, we have heart-centered excellence because we don't just teach people how to make money ruthlessly by manipulating and, and using sales scripts and all this. No, no, no. We teach people how to increase their income with impact. So that's our core value. So Isaac, in, in building your brand, you had to create values uh, and obviously slogans like, uh, uh, you know, within each, within each wheelhouse, right? Yeah. So, so with us, and this is, I guess I might've jumped ahead a little bit. Um, whenever I thought of prolific PT, I was like, what is it? What is it that I want? Cause now the clarity isn't just my specific niche. It's, mm. it's a whole company. I had to level up the way I thought. Yeah. So then it's like, okay, well, I want a trainer for every niche, a specific trainer for every niche. And that's where I see, I see a company with, you know, limitless potential within all different specialized areas. So my slogan became, um, like we specialize in you is the short slogan, I like that. but the longer slogan is every fitness journey d uh, deserves prolific results. And so with that, it, and that's what every single trainer under prolific adopted and they believed in it. So when every specific trainer within their wheelhouse all said, we specialize in you and every fitness journey deserves prolific results. And there it is that exactly. And so the branding happened because we had the, the slogan per se that attacked the pain point of the client, no matter who they were. But now we have many individuals who are carrying that branding with full fire in their hearts because, is, is, uh, because it is now their brand, not just mine. And that was the key to my branding success was making something that applied to everybody within my team. So now an entire team of coaches can go out and expand that brand. Instead of me just saying, you know, I help busy professionals get shredded without, you know, while keeping their health a priority. That was my old brand. And yes, it helped a very specific niche, but I can't change an industry with one specific niche. And that's what I wanted to do. And so that, you know, this branding style for me is very specific to me and my team, but for a trainer wanting to expand, having a good heart centered slogan, like your actual mission statement, I shouldn't even call it a slogan. It should be a condensed mission statement of the impact you want to make. Uh, and then get individuals behind it. So if you 
have a, a roster of clients who are built upon that mission statement and you solidify it in them throughout the process of the coaching. Again, branding on everything. If you give them a plan, you have it on their plan. If you give them uh, a, a ebook, it's on the ebook. Like that, that condensed mission statement is everywhere. It's going to subconsciously get ingrained into your clients. And when that is, and they go out and start telling their friends, they are going to be able to say, you know, I work with Isaac and, and he was just, he's really dedicated to helping like busy people get, get lean. Like it's, it's great. And, and he does it without, you know, messing up our health. Suddenly they don't even realize that it's just, they've seen it so many times. Yeah. And they're so on fire for what you've given them that they're going to use your branding to help build your business uh, without realizing it. And it's just because you've, you put it there so many times, just subtly that the subconscious picks up on that pattern. Our brain loves pattern as, as Alvin will say, the brain loves novelty. Well, the brains does des it's designed to pick patterns together. And so whenever that branding is consistent, the pattern happens subconsciously to where people start picking that up when they see it every day. So when they go out and they talk about, oh yeah, I'm working with this great trainer, they subconsciously go right into saying your branding, your condensed mission statement. So if you can solidify that and, and fully passionately be behind it and then make an impact on your clients, your branding is going to take you to the next level. Isaac, brilliant as always. As always, sir. All right, we're actually, we're, we're gonna leave it there because there's nothing more that can be said about branding. Key takeaways, please remember that sales and marketing are different, number one. Number two, marketing is not advertising. Marketing is the message. Advertising is what you do with the message. Three, ad, uh, branding is the cherry on top. It is the nice siding, but it is also how you are how you are going to leave the legacy of your business once you have chosen to step away from it. It is going to be your mission, your vision, and your gift to the world. So do start thinking about it. It is not just a bonus, but it will become what you end with when you are done your journey as just a personal trainer. Isaac, thank you again so much. Invaluable wisdom, sir. It is an honor to be here. And, uh, you're just looking beautiful as always. I'm excited for everything that you and the wife are doing and accomplishing right now. So uh, super happy to be here. Proud of you guys and uh, just honored to be a part of TRM. We appreciate it. Guys, if you liked what you heard today, please feel free to share, subscribe, tell your friends about it. Um, follow along on Apple, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever you typically listen to podcasts, but also follow us at Trainer Revenue Multiplier at Jame91. What is your Instagram, Isaac? Uh, the Prolific Professor. Of course it is. Love that. Love that branding. Guys, we are typically live every Thursday morning at 11.30 a.m. unless I'm buying a house. Uh, thank you all for tuning in, and we will see you next week. Yeah, have a good one.